Okay, well, first of all, um, thanks to uh, Yandex for inviting me for this seminar and to Andre for um, chasing me about it to um, make sure that I did it. Um, actually, it's been a quite a long time since I've really thought about this topic, and I realise from the workshop we were at last week that many of the people there and perhaps here know more about the topic than I did um, at the time, but perhaps, I mean, this is work really, I mean, first of all, let's say that it should be some random graph processes because we're only going to look at a very small proportion of the uh, types of processes which you can define in this way. And on the whole, this is work which um, I worked on with Alan Fries, perhaps, maybe eight or nine years ago, perhaps longer. So it's, a, um, it's more of a resume of past work. It wouldn't, and I was particularly asked to give it by Andre, so um, I'll do the best I can. Um, I noticed this seminar is scheduled for two hours, but I'm not accustomed really to talking for more than an hour, so I imagine this talk will last about an hour. Right, so this is joint work, or some of it is joint work with Alan Fries, and some of this is joint work with Pavel Pralat. Okay, so a random graph process. Um, is it possible to remove that picture from the corner of the slides? Okay, thanks. Um, all right, yeah, put it down there, mm, or over there. OK, so um, we're thinking about a graph process in which there's an existing graph, and at each step, something is done to it. So it's either um, there's some small number of structural changes, and these can be of various types. So for example, uh, we can add a new vertex uh, with ed edges incident with the existing graph. So that's a sort of, um, in that way, the graph grows by one vertex at a given step and some edges. Another way um, to grow it at a particular step is to add some edges within the existing graph. So we don't add any more vertices, but we add some more edges. And then there are possibilities to actually delete edges or vertex, vertices so that the graph can, in fact, either get larger or smaller at each step. And then there are possibilities to exchange existing edges with others. So the, uh, the topic of my talk really is the first two of these under certain models. This, uh, this, is, um, this has also been studied by various authors, uh, but I will not refer to it here. And this is really a slightly different kind of process, which I'm quite interested in, which um, we originally came across as a model of peer-to-peer -peer networks where uh, at a, you have a regular graph, that's a graph in which every vertex has the same degree, and at each step you switch one pair of edges for another, or you flip a pair of or edges at the end of a path of length three. So these kind of, this kind of model is more interest for um, um, randomizing existing networks to reduce the diameter of the network to make things closer. And um, as it says here, if these changes are random, which they may not be, then some asymptotic structural properties may emerge as the process evolves. And a particular example which has attracted a lot of interest um, by various researchers is that the degree sequence, that's the number of vertices of a given degree plotted against degree, has a power law, a power law, um, a Bayes power law with some parameter, which I'll write as gamma. So that's a particular topic which has been of interest. And um, it was the existence of this phenomena which uh, attracted people to study this model in the, la in the recent past. So, in outline, the talk will be like this. First of all, I'll, um, I'll give an, uh, an introduction and discuss various web graph models. And then I'll say a little bit about um, 
how to obtain the distribution of degree. So that's the probability that a vertex which joins at a time v has a particular degree at a time t in the future. And I'll say then something about the, um, the same process for directed um, models where the edges are joined in a directed fashion. So their point, the edges have a, have a meaningful orientation as opposed to just oriented from new to old. And um, finally, I'll say a little bit about models where um, at each step we add more and more edges in an attempt to produce some phenomena or other. So this is, um, this is the basis of the talk. And um, on the whole, I'm going to talk about what I call web graph models, which is a, a set of models I analyzed with Alan Fries uh, beginning in around the year 2000 or perhaps before. Um, which was the time when this, f this topic first became of uh, a general interest. Okay, so experimental studies. These are three typical studies which, um, which created a large amount of interest in this topic. So large-scale dynamic networks, such as the Internet and the World Wide Web, studies of these uh, networks. And um, perhaps the earliest study was by ba which um, is well known to computer scientists is by Barabasi and Albert. And this was the paper, Emergence of Scaling in Random Networks. And they looked at a piece of the World Wide Web which was contained in the, the particular domain of the university which they worked for. And they found if you plot, um, if you plot the degree of a vertex against the proportion of um, vertices with that degree on a log-log um, a scale, then essentially there's a part of it where it appears to have a straight line. So at that point, the degree is decreasing with um, a constant slope, so, or the log of the degree. So that's, uh, that straight line is the, uh, is the power, power law parameter. Of course, it doesn't really have a straight line. There's an area where... It's curved at the beginning because we're not looking at asymptotic processes. And there's an area at the end where there's not really any, there's only a probability distribution on degree that you wouldn't expect to see any vertices of a particular degree, but you might expect to see a distribution of vertices in some interval. And um, moreover, this is, of course, experimental data, so it's even surprising that you can see this much. This particular data is from a study made by Andrew Broder and um, some colleagues when Andrew Broder was working for AltaVista search engine as the technical manager. Um, AltaVista was a search engine which was around before Google, which basically worked on term document analysis. So with the advent of Google and PageRank, AltaVista became um, basically obsolete because uh, the quality of search changed radically with the introduction of page rank based methods. But um, what Andre did at this time uh, was, and his colleagues, was to, um, to make a massive or use a massive amount of cruel data obtained by the AltaVista search engine to analyze the structure of the web. And um, I understand that, for example, Yandex also has large cruel sets which it makes available to students and other people working here to study similar things. And, and what um, Andre and his colleagues found was that um, the out degree of a vertex had a power law parameter of a page with, with power law 2.72. And if you considered only um, out degree between different hosts, then it varied slightly, but not a lot. And so this is experimental data, but it does have a convincing curve of some sort. There's an area here where it curves down in some well-behaved fashion, then there's a linear section, and there's a distributional section. So it's interesting to, um, to think about models which, not, uh, which explain these various sections. And on the whole, we've worked on models which produce some, um, which explain, or not explain, but model successfully the first and middle sections. I haven't looked so closely at the upper section, but um, models where it's, not, it's only a power law asymptotically, but it has a well-defined degree sequence in the non asymptotic range. And the third example of studies of this sort was by Falutsos, Falutsos and Falutsos, who looked at power law uh, relationships in the internet topology. So um, 
One of them basic, one of these was basically a, an intranet. This was the World Wide Web, and that was for the internet. So once people found this, and it's true to say that before that, we thought mainly of Erdos Rainey type random graphs. Then they, um, we didn't have good uh, random graph models to, ex to uh, model this phenomena. We can't explain it, but we can model it. And so it became of interest to, um, to produce generative models for uh, graph processes, which could, could sort of come up with curves of this type. Um, nobody suggests that it actually we can explain what people are doing, but somehow in the, in the gross scale, people appear to be, or the behavior of people, because it's kind of more, more or less independent from person to person, it appears to have a kind of similarity to randomness. OK, so a power law degree sequence, which was the, um, the, the object of interest, the proportion of vertices of a given degree k follows an approximate inverse power law. So the, number of, the proportion of vertices of degree k uh, drops off as k to the minus some constant. And this is particularly true once the uh, degree becomes asymptotic. So here, um, infinity is about, is about 20 in this model for some constants um, c and gamma. And various explanatory models of this were derived using various very different techniques. For example, the, the model of Bolabash, Riordan, Spencer, and Tusnadi um, was one which it used a kind of a configuration model where, uh, where the kind, a com it was a combinatorial model where the, the, uh, the probability of inserting um, in a particular Vertex was proportional to the number of um, edges which it had, or the number of edges plus one. Um, and the model which they came up with for, um, for simple, straightforward preferential attachment explained not only this part of the curve, but this, this part here. So it had a sort of a meaningful non-asymptotic part. Um, <coughs> In a very different way, Aiello, Chung, and Liu um, basically took um, what is called a configuration model, where you, each vertex has a degree, and then you just, you just take a random permutation. So each, each vertex, if a vertex has degree k, then it's given k labeled points, labeled with its vertex label, but distinct. And you just take a permutation of all these points, and then divide it into edges. That's called a configuration model. <coughs> So they used a configuration model in which the, um, the, the uh, power law degree sequence was built into the model and uh, came up with rather different results because in certain domains it's not, um, it's not connected, for example. And uh, different again was the work of Kumar, Raghavan, Rag, Rag, Rajagopalan, Sivakumar, Tompkins and Upfell, where they basically had a model where... Um, a new vertex comes along and picks a random existing vertex and then joins to some fixed subset of its neighbors in a, ver in a directed model. So that was called a copying model. And then um, Sergei Dorogostev and uh, the Mendez and Samukin um, had various other models which were more um, featured around statistical f physics uh, explanations with renormalization. But I could say really that Sergei is probably more, um, you should have asked Sergei to give this lecture, is what I think, I didn't realize he was here, but um, he was here for the workshop, so Sergei should have given this lecture, but I'm standing in, let's look at it. Okay, so various models of various types, and of course we, um, we wanted to, uh, to sort of um, see what we could say as well, so um, <coughs> uh, before I go on to what that, let's just carry on with this introductory discussion. So preferential attachment, one particular generative model is this idea of preferential attachment that you attach to a vertex proportional to deg degree. So when you're inserting uh, new edges, either between a new vertex or between existing vertices, you somehow attach the vertices which already have the most edges. And um, this is a generative model which works, so of course it's of interest. And if you use preferential attachment in which you... Um, you add a new vertex at each step, irrespective of how many edges you add, you get a power law of three. So that's the kind of, that was the basic model, and this was kind of introduced by Barabasi and Albert. But in fact, preferential attachment model dates back to Yule, or even before, um, which uh, in this paper, apparently, a mathematical theory of evolution based on the conclusions of Dr. J.C. Willis, which is an old paper from 1924, 
And basically, in the simplest form, this model generates a random tree. Each point independently generates children at rate 1 in a time interval delta t. So the way, at a particular vertex, the waiting time for the next offspring is negative exponential with parameter 1. So the early points have the most children. And uh, preferential attachment was proposed as a random graph model for the World Wide Web uh, by Barabas and Elmert. And that's in their paper, The Emergence of Scaling Net in Random Networks. And there's some discussion around whether their, um, their model was clearly defined or not, but it's not, we won't concern ourselves with this here. So preferential attachment is a very popular model. Um, and um, the publications relevant to this talk, um, this is basically the paper which, um, where we, worked, we mainly worked on this model. So it was called a general model of web graphs, which is in random structures and algorithms. Um, and basically, it's an analysis of the recurrence for the expected number of vertices of degree k uh, combined with some concentration results and uh, bounds for the maximum degree. And in that thing, uh, we'll, I'll come on to discuss the model, but basically, at each step, you can add edges between new vertices, old vertices, um, and you can do it preferentially, uniform at random, or any kind of mixture of that. So it's, it's just a generalization of preferential attachment to allow, um, allow one to get other parameters apart from three. So it was a, kind of just a, it was a way of generalizing preferential attachment um, in the most general way that we could, uh, because basically the conversation went, if we're going to do it, we might as well do the most general possible thing and it, um, it uses Laplace's method to solve recurrences with rational coefficients. So we had the sort of, it's easy to set up the, um, the recurrences for the expected degree, but we didn't actually know how to solve the recurrences. Um, but fortunately, one day, completely by chance, I found an old book in the library which told you how to do it. So, um, and that was a step forward for us. Um, <coughs> And it uses a martingale argument to, um, to get the concentration of the degree sequence within certain bounds. Uh, purely, um, actually not because of the desire to find the distribution of degree, but in, in order to solve another problem, which was to do with um, um, a process in which there are actually two types of vertex which behave slightly differently, but they don't say which type they were. And it was a kind of an interest in discriminating between these red and blue vertices that eventually um, I was kind of forced to, um, to write down the degree distribution of these processes. So um, this is a byproduct of looking at some up, looking at another problem. But in this paper, um, I look at or looked at the age specific degree distribution of web graphs. So basically, I label a vertex, or a vertex is labeled by its age. So if it joins at a time v, it's got a label v, and um, you can find the degree distribution as time evolves towards a time t. And it describes the degree distribution directly, um, basically using the type of uh, methods uh, which are used in statistical physics to derive um, uh, various uh, quantum distributions. And, um, uses this to obtain the expected number of vertices of degree k as a byproduct of the degree distribution. So it adds up um, over all the possible vertices the probability which the vertex has degree k. So it's, there's no, um, it doesn't go directly to the recurrence for the expected degree, but it gets the distribution and then adds it up. And um, in a later paper, well, actually isn't that much later, but it took a long time to get published, um, this is with Cooper and Pavel Pralat, um, or Prawat, the scale, which is scale-free graphs of increasing degree, uh, which was actually published in 2011, but probably finished about five years earlier. Um, then we, we uh, basically uh, adapt this degree distribution information to obtain results for models where the degree grows at each step. So. Um, in the basic bolabash riordan model of scale-free graphs, at each step, exactly one new edge is added. So if you want to add, if you want to model adding m edges, then you basically you take m steps and bulk them into one step. Um, so we did a similar thing there. We basically added a new edge at each step and then bulked a growing function of um, time 
number of edges together to find the, the joint distribution or the overall distribution of those things. Um, so they're the basic papers which uh, I'll say something about here. Okay, so we, uh, when we sort of um, <coughs> introduced this model, we called it a web graph model um, because there was some competition at the time about what to call these models. So we, as it was supposed to be a model of the web, we called it a web graph. Uh, many other names became um, introduced, like some were copying models, some were um, scale-free models of Bolibash and Neorden. And on the whole, these models nowadays tend to be called scale-free models, or there's the model of... Buckley and Ofsus, which has a slightly different generative process. But these models are simple undirected or directed process models uh, where a mixture of vertices and edges are random, are added at each step, either preferentially or uniformly at random. And you can add, you know, you can add some of each. There's no restriction. Each edge behaves independently. And so um, the basic um, thing which we kind of noticed was that for undirected web graph processes, as the degree t tends to infinity, the expected proportion of vertices of degree k tends to a power law. And this power law is given by, basically, the power law is 1 plus 1 over a parameter, which I call eta. And this, e this parameter eta has a, um, a very simple description, in fact. It's, um, it's the limiting ratio of the expected number of edge endpoints inserted in the process by preferential attachment to the total expected degree. So basically, if you add up over the process how many edge endpoints you introduce by preferential attachment and you divide by the total degree of the process at that step, then that limiting ratio has this value eta. So in some sense, you could say heuristically that you can predict the power law of these, um, these models without doing any analysis, or certainly for the kind of models which are we analyze because basically you just add up the average number of preferential attachment endpoints and divide by the average number of edges added. So it's, it's a rule of thumb for, it's a heuristic for um, analyzing the power law of models which are difficult to analyze or it can be used. And uh, the other thing we found was that in the models we analyzed, the maximum degree at time n is of order n to the, um, or at time, when n is the number of vertices is at order n to the eta. So this parameter, um, which is the ratio of um, preferential attachment endpoints to all endpoints, has a special kind of role, and it, also, and it comes in the power law, and it also comes in the maximum degree. And these results of, seem often to hold for, um, for other types of processes, which aren't just actually don't fit into the web graph model, and maybe in, within certain ranges can be used as a general heuristic. Um, let me just give you a couple of examples of what I'm saying here. So um, here's, a, here's an example of the power law heuristic. The standard preferential attachment model, well, it's not a heuristic here. The power law is, is what it says. But I make the graph GT from the graph GT minus 1 by adding a new vertex VT at step T with well, an M, M neighbors chosen preferentially from GT minus 1 or an average of M neighbors chosen from GT minus 1. So basically, I add M edges. The, the endpoints attached to the new vertex are not preferential because they're just coming out of the new vertex. And the other endpoints are chosen preferentially. So that the, the ratio of the preferential to the total is M over 2M, which is a half. So it predicts a power law of 1 plus 1 over a half, which is 3, and a maximum degree around n to the half. And these are, in fact, correct for that model. And however much you change m as a constant, you can add one edge or 100 edges or basically log of n edges. It won't make any difference to this, power, to this proportion here or this power law. So it's a useful heuristic in certain circumstances. And um, here's just a plot of... Um, some evidence for this that the um, the power law this this, this is um, this is slope three and this is a network of size twenty and two hundred and so on so it soon converges to uh, to slope three and the as as the network gets larger so at about um, three hundred thousand vertices the maximum degree is about 0.5. Um, and thanks to Yanis Siantos who's a PhD student for this figure. 
So um, it's not surprising here that this has a power law of three because this is just a straightforward Barabasi-Elbert model. But it's possible to generate other sorts of models which don't seem so easy to analyze. Um, for example, this is a, a triangle closing model where um, you make a graph from the previous one by adding a new vertex. And it ha the way you do this is you just, you just pick a random vertex in the existing graph attached to it. And then you pick one of its neighbors uniformly at random and attached to that. So each step you introduce one triangle. Um, and this is the same as choosing that endpoint of that edge preferentially, because the probability that a vertex is chosen is proportional to its degree, because it has, if I've got degree w, then it has dw neighbors. So basically, you've got chance dw over some normalizing constant of picking, um, picking those neighbors uniformly at random and then choosing that endpoint. So one edge in four is chosen preferentially. Um, so in this case, one, two, three edges, one, sorry, one, two, three edges are not chosen preferentially, and that ed edge endpoint is chosen preferentially. And um, so heuristically, so eta is one over four, and you might think that uh, the power law was five, and that the maximum degree, which is order n to the eta, should be about n to the quarter. And experimentally, this seems to be true, but um, it seems quite difficult to analyze this model formally, or we never really achieved a proper formal analysis of this model. So um, here's an example where I'm just applying it as a heuristic, but uh, it seems to work. So it, maybe it's not a bad heuristic within certain ranges. So once again, thanks to Yanis for the figure. And this is, um, this is this model plotted up to four times 10 to the eight vertices. So it's clear that you t it takes quite a lot of, quite a, the graph has to be quite large before it has a slope, power law slope five. Um, and it's beginning to really sort of straighten out at five there. And it's also interesting that the maximum degree is beginning to sort of maybe tend to uh, polylog of n to the quarter there. So I'm not, su I'm not suggesting that this is the correct answer, but I'm suggesting that it's an interesting heuristic which requires some explanation which stands outside um, the kind of models which we generated for this, uh, for, to, um, to explore these kind of power laws. It seems to be indicative of some much more general um, rule than the ones which we analyzed. And notice that the heuristic gives no information about convergence rate because it's, I mean, really, even at um, four times 10 to the eight vertices, it hasn't, it hasn't properly converged. Whereas the other one, where it really was preference attachment, converged at about 20,000 vertices or below. So this is, if, if I had to make one remark about what we learned, I would say this was the, in, this was the interesting thing we learned about, um, from all of this that you can predict the power law without doing the analysis. Uh, OK, so um, on to the sort of um, the main body of the talk, um, which is about the web graph model. Um, <clears throat> and this is, this, this is the kind of, these are the kind of generative choices which this model has. So um, various things can be done. You can uh, add a new vertex at a given step. And um, the model allows a distribution on the number of edges, so there's no restriction that you have to have one edge or two. You can just have any finite probability distribution. And the type of connection can vary between edges, between preferential attachment, and uniformly at random. So you can have some sort of, you make an independent choice. And, uh, or you can add um, edges between, vert between existing vertices. And once again, that can have a distribution. And you can allow the, uh, the endpoints of the edge. The initial vertex can be chosen preferentially or uniformly. And the terminal vertices can be chosen preferentially or uniformly. So it, um, it, it functions as a model for, um, for increasing the density of existing graphs um, in, the, in whatever way you like. And it's fair to say that by um, adjusting these parameters, you can get any power law between 2 and uh, infinity. So gr greater, that, greater than 2 and less than inf uh, up lead going to infinity. So, and uh, perhaps another moral is that you can obtain the power law in many different ways by varying the parameters. So although power laws may be, may be of interest in a general sort of way, 
they don't seem to have any real predictive, uh, they don't seem to say anything very deep about, or not, I'll rephrase that, they don't seem to say anything unique about the way the model was, the network was constructed, because we can construct lots and lots of networks with the same power law, but with different choices to make it. So um, I don't know what the best, uh, the best property uh, to look for is, but it's certainly not power laws in a way. Okay, so um, <clears throat> this, is just, this is just a resume of what I said, that, this, that you can predict the power law in terms of this ratio of uh, expected n votes inserted preferentially to the total degree, and any power law can be obtained by suitable choice of parameters. Okay, so what are the parameters? Well, basically at each step you either add a new vertex plus some edges with uh, probability alpha, or you add ver vertices, be edges between existing vertices with probability 1 minus alpha. So basically you toss up some sort of kind of bias coin, and at a particular step we say either let's add some new, a new vertex, or let's some chuck some edges in between existing vertices. Um, and having done that, the number of edges that we're going to add is sampled from some distribution depending on the choice. So, um, you know, you can have any kind of distribution you like. We only, we only analysed it for finite distributions, but it could probably be sort of relaxed to things like Poisson or something. Um, and then at each edge endpoint makes some uniform or random or preferential choice. Um, so if it's a new vertex, the choice for edges is directed out from the vertex. We, just for convenience, we assume edges are directed out. And um, there's, so there's three parameters, basically choices for new vertices, choices for the initial endpoint of, of edges between existing vertices, and choices for the terminal endpoint. So basically A, B, C, three parameters for... Um, the three, um, the three things here, which is the parameter A governs this choice here, the parameter B governs the, the, um, the, the, uh, the initial degree here, and the parameter C um, governs the terminal degree there. And uh, basically after this then um, all edges are, are regarded as directed out from the new vertex and each edge chooses independently using some probability mixture. So you just toss another coin, and with some, prob with some probability A1, um, you, um, you, you attach preferentially, and with some probability A2, uh, you attach uniformly at random. And at the time, this seemed novel, but of course, uh, I'm sure a lot of you have moved uh, further than this now, so this seems kind of old hat, but uh, this is, uh, this is the, the model for web graphs. So the probability that um, that a particular um, <coughs> that something is chosen by our ER, a particular edge is A1 that it chooses preferentially plus A2 that it cho chooses uniformly at random, which adds up to one. And in the case of inserting between existing edges, that A shouldn't be there; it's a typo. Um, but B and C. So the initial degree is chosen preferentially with probability B1 or uniformly with B2 and so on, so you can make the same things. And in this way you can, um, you can generate a set of recurrences for the expected degree of the vertices um, and then analyse these recurrences using Laplace's technique. And the result of these choices is that um, basically when you get down to it there are two parameters um, which are associated with this model. One is a preferential attachment parameter, eta, which is basically, this is, uh, with probability alpha I add a new vertex, this is the average number of edges I add, that's the probability I add them preferentially. With probability 1 minus alpha I insert between old, edge, old vertices, that's the average number of vertices, edges I add. This is the probability that uh, the, initial, um, the, 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 the initial part of the edge is added preferentially, and that's the probability that the terminal part of the edge is preferen added preferentially. And underneath here is the, is, the, is the total average number of edges. So it's just the power law is just the ratio of the preferential stuff to the total edges. And this here is another parameter which um, reflects uniform at random behavior, which doesn't appear in the, um, in the power law um, distribution for, um, for the graph. But in fact, uh, will affect this curvature here. So it does appear 
but it, does, it only appears in the non-asymptotic phase of the, uh, jet of, of, the, of the degree distribution. So it, it's there, but it's in this part here uh, where, there's, where, where the process is non-asymptotic. What's this? Is this me that did that? OK, um, so basically two parameters. The preferential one is important for the power law. The uniform at random one, is, which is, is important for the, um, the non-asymptotic the non part of the distribution. Uh, is it me doing this, or is it just doing this on its own? OK, so they're not. Um, this one's easily, easily explained. This one perhaps has a less clear explanation, but it's not important for most of this discussion, but it's important in terms of degree distribution because the degree distribution will be a function of both these parameters. Okay, so what is, um, what is the degree distribution um, of in the undirected model? So I've kind of jumped over the initial analysis using expected degree and chosen just to talk about the degree distribution because that's probably a bit more novel than solving the, the recurrences for expected degree. Um, so what I'm particularly interested in, in this, um, in this general kind of um, mixture type, probability mixture type model, is to find, um, given that I add a vertex V uh, to time V, so I'm using the vertex label, the vertexes are labeled by the step at which they're added. Um, it's most convenient to do that. So this is the vertex added at... Um, at step v, and its initial degree was m. So it, when it was added, um, it had m edges pointing out. So what I want to know is, how can I, um, how can I describe the, the, degree dis the asymptotic deg the degree distribution at a future time in terms of the initial degree and some other number of edges which have been added since, either by other new vertices attaching to it or by the insertion of edges between existing vertices. So it turns out that what this formula is that what you get is a kind of negative binomial distribution, which is that um, the, um, <coughs> the probability of the degree is m plus l is basically something l, l plus m plus the ratio of those uh, preferential attachment and, and uniform at random parameters minus one choose l. And then the, um, this, is the, this is the birth time of the vertex divided by the current time raised to um, its initial degree times eta plus um, the, u the uniform at random parameter and then one minus that ratio to the eta to the L. So it turns out that the degree distribution is negative binomial and this, there are obviously many caveats about this such that I'm um, assuming that the time was, the V was added after some time tending to infinity and this, and that, um, well, that there are very, that this analysis was only for certain um, certain values of L, so it was up to about t to the quarter. Um, it didn't seem particularly easy to analyze it past that. I think uh, various people have analyzed it now, like um, Graham Brightwell and Melvina Wuchuk may, may have made some analysis of this in the higher range, but uh, I decided just to stick with um, with the kind of smaller values of degree. So it's a, re I mean, it's a reasonable question, and the fact is actually, I mean, I should have drawn a picture of this, but this degree distribution is, um, is very spread out. So um, it has a very long lower tail. So for, um, <coughs> perhaps, a, can I draw on this, um, over here on this? Yeah. So uh, basically, this is L. Um, so its, it's lower tail is, is, quite, um, is quite long, and then it drops off rather quickly in sort of polylog above the mean. The expected degree is about m t over v to the eta. So that's the expected degree at, um, of the vertex, which uh, born at time v um, at time t. That's this, this is this power law parameter. So if it, was, if it was ordinary preferential attachment, it would just be the initial number of edges times t over v to the half. 
that's, is that all right? Can you see that all right? It's, I've written rather small there. But, um, and, and the mean is at around the mode, and above the mean it drops off very quickly. So in like a log or, or log or log, a log times log log, it's, it's fallen down exponentially small. But the lower tail can be quite spread out. Um, so the degree distribution isn't con so concentrated in the lower tail, but it's, it drops off quickly above the mean. So, for example, I mean, and given this, you can obviously obtain many, um, many parameters of the network because if you know what the degree distribution of most of the vertices is, you can, uh, you can analyze quite a lot of things. Um, <clears throat> I'll come back to some of the things you can get in a moment, but just briefly to explain how it's done. It's done in a very straightforward way. It's like um, it kind of reminded me of when I learned statistical mechanics at university as an undergraduate, this analysis, but it was just the idea of doing it, which, which was novel at the time. So um, this is the vertex, um, the vertex V added at step V. Um, and I'm just, just basically illustrate how I, would, um, il how I would calculate the probability that the degree increases by two um, at step T. So it had an initial uh, degree M and at the end, at um, at step uh, t, it's going to have um, it's going to have degree m plus two, so it's it's going to go up by two. So um, basically, there are two. Really, it boils down to two, to a simple um, Bernoulli process, in which um, the probability that the degree um, <coughs> increases from j m plus j to m plus j plus one at a particular step is just this power law parameter times m plus j over the step label plus the uniform at random parameter over the step label and the probability it doesn't is one minus that so it's a kind of it just basically boils down to a simple Bernoulli process where um, with um, which is conditional on its current degree uh, these two parameters and the current time and it varies like this so for example this is kind of you know, the usual statistical mechanical sort of stuff. It changes at a couple of times, tor 1 and tor 2. So you can just write down the probability of that. Um, obviously, there's some, an, it, there's some analysis to reach this point where you see that it's a Bernoulli process. But once you're here, then you can just write down the probability that nothing happens. Um, so I haven't got any excess points at the moment. And then at tor 1, I get my first change. So I get a probability which is just e to m over tor 1 plus nu over tor 1, and then nothing happens up to tor 2. And then I might get my second change, so my, I'm now having eta m plus 1, and then nothing happens up to t. And when you actually, um, <coughs> when you actually evaluate this, it, um, this, 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 um, this boils down to this thing here, which is this binomial coefficient times that, times something times tor 1 to the eta minus 1, and what you've got under here is exactly the same thing, but with a tor 2 just there. So you can write down for a particular um, set of transition points um, when this happens. And these, these events are so rare in the kind of, um, in the kind of general um, mm, scheme of things that they don't, there's not much interaction between them. They, don't, you, they very rarely happen one after the other. Um, and actually, there's not much interaction between vertices either, so you can almost treat the evolution of these vertex degrees is independent for each vertex, which, uh, which makes life quite easy for various analyses. And so this is for a particular tor 1 and tor 2, you get a value like this, because these are just e to the minus that. These are just ex sums of exponentials, and it all adds up to something quite nice and cancels. So um, <coughs> this horrible mess, when you get these product of time varying Bernoulli's, um, adds up to something with a very, very simple explanation, and, um, uh, with, and, and quite a nice functional form. Yeah, it's probably better up there. Yeah. Um, and you can, you can provide you're not too ambitious about um, how, how, many, how large you want L to be. For example, you, as long as it's not more than about t to the quarter, um, or then you can make this analysis for various values of L, and you get the degree distribution um, 
for most vertices, this is within one. This 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 is well defined and approximated within one plus little o of one over the entire degree range. So you can get the degree distribution over the entire range. And um, <coughs> okay, so when you when you've got you've got that from the previous slide. So basically, you just want to add them up, and tor one is less than tor two. So um, it doesn't look particularly nice as it stands, but if I've got if I've got a lot of events v v plus one v plus two tor one tor two, um, then basically um, <coughs> if you think about that as the as as um, as um <coughs> you know sort of time time plus one time plus two and that vector and then another vector the same and square them, then um, there are very f the, the kind of um, when you do that, there's the um, the uh, how can I explain this? But you can because there's the, these events are so rare in the general on the general time axis for most uh, sequences. So if I have like x one, <coughs> if I if I square that, I mean obviously it's not here. But if I had like x one plus dot 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 plus x t squared and there were many entries here then most of those entries would be of the form xi xj and the xi squared entries would be few in that vector the number of entries would be few so basically i can replace that product by this um, this product squared divided by two factorial um, and have to make some separate calculations for the the cases where um xi I is, e I is equal to j So I can replace um, this summation by an integral, um, <coughs> and it's an integral squared. So I just integrate that squared, and that integrates out to this negative binomial distribution. Okay, so that's the um, that's the way that the degree distribution is obtained. It's just the generalization of this, where I just put um, I just go t1 up to tl, and these formulae come out exactly the same, but it just goes t1 up to tl in here. And this goes like up to um, m plus one, m plus l minus one, and the the bottom part of the um, of the binomial coefficient just comes from dividing through by l factorial here when I replace this product by um, the sum of um, the, su the sum of things raised to the power of l and then replace the the sum by the integral. Obviously, this is all has to be done formally and properly. This is just an indicative proof, but you can replace the summation by integration and get a reasonable, get little o of one error terms. Okay, so um, having, you, having got the degree distribution, there's various things you can do with it, and I haven't really mentioned that many, but I noticed that there was sort of some interesting things like um, the evolution of joint degrees with uh, the existence of certain numbers of edges and things included as well. So you could probably um, make some analysis of that form using these results because the degree distribution for a vertex V and the degree distribution for a vertex W evolve in a more or less uncorrelated way um, over time. And even if you, you put some sort of... Um, some conditions like W chooses V, so you get some probability for that, then the rest of it's probably um, more or less uh, just depends on the subsequent degrees. So these can, be at, these can be regarded as almost independent processes. Obviously, they're not completely independent, the evolution of degrees of different vertices, because if one vertex gets the other edges, the other one doesn't. But the times when they get them are so scarce that um, it hardly matters. Okay, so once you've got that, you can um, you can do you can work out the expected proportion of vertices of a given degree, say m plus l, and it just comes out to some ratio of these kind of of these um, factorials. Um, and so um, <coughs> this will I mean and so these okay, what do I want to say here? The expected proportion of vertices of degree m plus l given the initial degree is m is a ratio of factorials and the um, the fact that this is not it, in the non asymptotic case this is not quite a power law and the um, the uniform at random parameter occurs in here explains this um, this part of the distribution for these models the curvature here because the same as in the Bolabash Riordan model the scale free there's a, there's a 
there's a full explanation um, of the curvature here, except that there it was just, it was like it went, it, it, because it was just straight preferential attachment, there wasn't an obvious dependence on the uniform at random parameter, because there wasn't a uniform at random parameter. Whereas now there's actually a parameter in there for that. Okay, so um, you can explain the, um, the, dis the expected proportion of vertices of a given degree. Um, you, can make some you can make some estimates of the number of um, vertices of a given degree, basically using the Chebyshev inequality, uh, because the degree distributions are not very correlated, um, <coughs> provided that you don't get too ambitious about the size of the degrees. I think you can do it up to about... Uh, t to the one eighth or something, not very much, but um, and as, as L tends to infinity, the extra vertices, this tends to a power law with L to the one plus one over eta, which is, which explains the relationship between the power law and the preferential attachment proportion. Uh, the range of eta is between zero and one, which means that you get power law coefficients. This should say greater than two there. And if you let eta tend to zero, so that the only, the only, um, the only, th the only important thing is the, is the uniform at random choice, then this tends to uh, a graph with a geometric degree sequence, a geometric degree sequence random graph with that parameter. So this is the limit as eta tends to zero of this, this process as the preferential attachment becomes less and less important. It just tends to a geometric degree sequence random graph. Okay, so that's, the, that's basically the, um, the undirected model. And then um, I'm afraid this talk's rather samey, but it, it then goes on to look at the direct, some directed models. But, uh, you know, this is the kind of... This is basically what I did, so I can now, I can now only describe the directed version. So uh, that we also analysed um, a, a directed model, which um, we were able, or I was able to do... Um, by obtaining the degree sequence for the model. Um, and this is a kind of a generalization of the, um, the Borg, Chase, Bolabash, uh, Riordan model for directed um, scale free graphs. It's a, and it, the generalization was obtained because, essentially, because we didn't do it, um, we wrote down um, recurrences for the expected in and out degree of these things and couldn't solve them. Um, but once we, uh, once we, once we analyze the degree sequence, uh, sorry, the degree distribution rather than recurrences for the expected number, then we were able to obtain solutions for these models. So um, this is what I call a hub authority model because basically um, we distinguish between vertices which a lot of edges pointed out, opinionated pages. So a lot, they, they've, they sort of, um, they point to lots of things if you like, which we call hubs and authorities, which are vertices with a lot of edges directed towards them. So they're, um, if you like, popular pages. So, for example, Adobe Acrobat's a popular page because there's lots of edges pointing towards it because there's lots of web pages. If, we're saying, don't you, if you don't have Adobe Acrobat, download it here and there's a link. So, um, uh, once again, this is a completely general model within its framework. The initial in and out degree of a vertex which joins at a particular time is given by a distribution. I think for sort of simplicity, I only assume that either at a particular moment it chose some, some um, number of um, in edges or some number of out edges, but it, it's, there's nothing to stop you choosing both in and out edges uh, when it joins. It was just, uh, I got a bit fed up with analyzing it by then, so I didn't bother to do it. Um, so basically a new vertex comes along and um, it, uh, it directs some edges towards itself and some edges away from itself and given by some distribution. And how does a new vertex uh, choose it, the edges directed towards it? Um, well, it basically chooses its neighbors preferentially based on their out degree because basically the more, the bigger a hub you are, the more likely you are direct to direct edges towards the new vertex. That's the that's the kind of the insight into this. And um, how does it choose its out neighbors? Well, it directs them once again preferentially based on the in degree of existing vertices. So it's more, most likely to point to an authority vertex. So it's kind of um, the generative process um, encourages the formation of hubs and authorities. So yeah, by um, choosing in degree uh, proportional to out degree of um, 
existing vertices, and the same process can be made for inserting edges between existing vertices in exactly the same way as what is done here, except that now it's, it's, these edges are truly directed, so basically there's some going each way in both of these processes. The slides from now on are a bit in the wrong order, so I'll give the talk in a slightly different order from... Um, but basically, it's, uh, it's exactly the same uh, ideas. You just make a probability mixture, but it's you, you, you derive the degree distribution in this way by separating these choices. Um, if you don't separate these choices, then this particular trick doesn't work, um, also partially because it's, as I'll explain in a minute, it's hard to... These, um, there's, several, there's several paths to get to a particular in and out degree here. And partially, you can't, the, the degree sequences don't separate properly here. But as long as you stick to this kind of restricted model, where um, if I'm going to point to a vertex, I choose something which is already much pointed to, so in other words, it's an authority, then you can make this analysis. Um, OK, I'll come back to these in a minute, because it's, it's better to start here, maybe. So um, for the hub authority model, the degree distribution, um, Basically, there's an explicit distribution similar to the undirected. Uh, I haven't written it down, but it looks exactly like two copies of this multiplied together, one for out degree and one for in degree. So, you, you'd, I mean, like you'd have the probability that D plus VT is equal to M plus L, and D would be something with parameters for particular parameters for out degree there and a similar for the in degree. So, it's basically the degree distribution is multiplicative in this model, which is what makes it simple and able to analyse. Once you try to go to general choices, then it, the degree distribution is no longer asymptotically multiplicative, and it's harder to add up. Um, so you're left, with, um, you're left with this in this kind of form, some sort of mess here, which you can't add up. So the degree distribution oops, is, is multiplicative. Um, and you can get a power law for the number of vertices um, of that in degree R and out degree S in the form of something or other. The trouble is, when you go to add this up, it gets a bit messy because um, I haven't really said what it is here. I've just said, well, it has got a power law. Um, as, um, as Christian Borg mentioned the other day when he gave his, t at some point, I mean, just by reference, he's to. Um, their model that it was only analyzable in certain ranges, or someone mentioned it. Um, this is similar, true. You can analyze it. You can get the degree distribution, so you know everything about the distribution of in and out degree of every vertex. The problem comes just in adding up the number of vertices of in degree R and out degree S, because when you try to add it up, it doesn't add up very well in general, unless you make some simplifications. Um, so once again, you get... Um, you get these kind of eta plus and eta minus things. So, and once again, they have exactly the same meaning. So you could probably predict the power law of these sort of models with the power laws without actually making the analysis because they have the same meaning. So the parameter eta minus is the limiting ratio of expected number of edges whose terminal vertex, I think this is correct, was chosen by preferential attachment um, to the expected number of edges in the process. Yeah, that's right, because it's in degree, so um, it's terminal chosen preferentially. And so strangely, the, the, um, the in degree parameter de depends on, to some extent, the out degree of the vertex, which I suppose it would do. Um, so this is, the total, this is the kind of total number of edges generated, and these are the in degree ones. So this is basically, um, this is the in degree of... Um, of new vertices, and this is the in degree of part of existing edges, because it's the second part where it points to the vertex. So, um, once it, and you get, so you get four of these parameters, you get an eta plus, an eta minus, and a nu plus, and a nu minus. So it's, um, so I should have put nu plus, nu minus there. Um, and it depends on the initial in and out degree of the vertex. But um, these, are, these are average, these are, just, these are just averages over the process. So once again, it seems that actually, once you understand what these parameters are, there's not, you know, you can almost do it without, you can almost say what the result is without analysing it. Um, okay, how does the degree sequence differ from undirected? Well, not in the, um, not in the degree distribution, because it's basically the product over a wide range. 
Um, the problem comes when you, um, when you try to calculate the expected proportion of degree um, R in degree R and out, so out degree S. Um, so uh, basically what you get is something, I mean, I've, uh, they're binomial things like before, negative binomials, but I've simplified them down. You get something and the parameters are not very nice. Um, I'm not going to go over this, but basically there's an integral here which, um, which is hard to evaluate in general and, has, um, and depends on these parameters where th there's a dependence between the initial out degree, uh, this, this uniform average out uh, <coughs> plus and preferential attachment parameter. So basically, you can write it down. We, I mean, there's nothing to stop you writing down the number of vertices of in degree R and out degree S, but the trouble is it's in an um, integral form. And depending on how you vary um, R and S here, this integral has different asymptotics, so it's messy. So there's no, um, there's no happy story here for um, this integral. Oops. Um, so I didn't, rather than sort of... Um, Go into the details, um, I'll leave it in this form, but this, this integral can be evaluated in various ranges um, depending on the relative values of R and S. Okay, so what did we get um, from this? Well, basically for the undirected model, you can get the age-dependent degree distribution, and it looks like that, uh, which allows you to get the number of vertices of a given degree or the expected number and it explains the kind of the, cur the, the curviness of those curves at the beginning uh, and the asymptotic degree sequence in the middle range. I didn't make any analysis in the upper tail where it's a distribution. For the hub authority, um, you can get the age dependent in and out degree distribution. It's just the product of the marginals. Um, you can sort of get the number of vertices of given in and out degree as an integral or in analyze it in certain ranges. Um, and you can get the asymptotic degree sequence, but these parameters vary um, as a function of K and L. So there's, it's not a satisfactory answer. Um, so basically, the Hubble authority model sticks really at the, the, the degree distribution, which is satisfactory. The general directed model can't really get anything using this technique. Uh, the in and out degree distribution is not obtainable explicitly because it's the integrals are path dependent. The order of events matters. And I'll just briefly explain what I mean by the general directed model. So basically, the probability that V points to W is, is to do with is, is a proportional to the out degree of W and the in degree of W and some uniform at random thing. So if, um, if W has in degree 2, that could be made up by various choices, like two out degree choices, um, adding new vertices, one of those and one uh, sort of old edge, come, edge coming into W between... Um, uh, exist, exerting edges between existing vertices, that could occur the other way around, which would give a different thing, or two edges could be inserted at W um, based on ex choices, which inserting edges between existing vertices. So various paths lead to that. So it's not a... The analysis is not... It's, obviously, we try to do it, but um, the analysis is not simple like this because there are various paths depending on what happens and why. Okay, so um, <coughs> okay, I'm, I'm the only other thing which I have um, prepared a slide to talk about is the, the question of the preferential attachment model where you increase the degree because the preferential attachment model, if you add any constant number of edges, it has a power law 3, which is somehow rather unsatisfactory because why should the power law be independent of the number of edges I add? Surely um, somehow it must... Um, it must reflect this in some way. So it's a reasonable question. Um, if I, this is a very, very simple process where I add a new vertex at each step, and the number of edges the new vertex has is a function of time or step number. So um, the simplest case, really, would it's a bit difficult to think, well, you know, what shall I, how shall I parameterize it? You know, you could have log or whatever, but the simplest case is if I just let the number of edges be the integral part of the step number raised to the power of c for some constant between 0 and 1. So if you do that, then you can use, basically bulk up these, um, the degree distribution. We, you, can add, you can sort of trick this and, add, and, protect, and sort of add this as a series of edges, just you know, one after the other after the other. And you can get the degree distribution for each of the kind of 
each of the kind of mini vertices according to this and add them up. Um, and when you do that, you get the power law, which looks like this. So um, the scaling constant changes with time, but the moral is basically that as long as c is little o of 1, then that's k to the 3 underneath there. So if you add less edges than um, t to the c, where c is a constant, so you add t to little o of 1, so like a log or you know even more, but not t to the constant, you're not going to shift that power law. In order to shift that power law in a preferential attachment model, you've got to add t to the constant um, edges at each step. So you need c greater than 0 to get away from that power law 3. Um, and what happens when c to get equals to 1, you can prove that all vertices have basically degree about t. So the whole thing is completely flat. All right, there are some vertices a bit one way or the other. But there's no power law anymore if you add t edges at each step. Basically, the, uh, the, every vertex has about t edges. So the early vertices get more edges because they've been around. And the late ones get the last vertex has t edges because at time t, that's exactly what you added. So the thing kind of smooths out to something which hasn't got a power law. And in between, the power law is like that. So it's 1 plus 2 over 1 minus c, which is greater than 3. Um, so it tends from 3 to infinity, which is basically uniform in this case. Um, so that kind of answered a question in my mind about why, what do you have to do to get away from a preferential attachment power law 3? And the answer is that you have to you have to add quite a lot of edges at each step. And this analysis can be made um, using that degree distribution. And we made an analysis with Pavel Prala in a directed model as well, which I don't reproduce here. OK, so concluding remarks um, about web graph model. Um, it's good for some things and not for others. Um, it works nicely for undirected models. It provided a heuristic predicting degree sequence, uh, power law, and maximum degree in completely unrelated models. Um, presumably, there's something much deeper than just you know, the kind of simple process models we've generated here. And it's kind of interesting to investigate if you can find models which break this rule. Um, I'm going to get a student to look at this. Um, it generalizes to hypergraph models. You don't have to add edges. You can add hyper edges just the same, you know. And within the hyper edge, you can you can have add, you know each each bit of it can add uniformly at random or preferentially, and you can have a distribution on hyper edges. I haven't discussed this here, but that was you. This model was used in a sort of um, by market research people in market basket analysis, um, because you know you'd expect that there's kind of um, the products are kind of picked preferentially. Once you've picked it, you tend to pick it in the future more. Um, if you add um, t to the little o of 1 edges at each step, the power law for preferential attachment is 3. If you add t to the constant, then it's more than you can crack that and go above 3. So not so good points. Uh, the directed models are less pleasing. Uh, the, dis in, the, in, the distrib degree distribution is fine, but the power law varies relative to the in-degree and out-degree. Um, and the problem is that you're looking at in-degrees and out-degrees which are tending to infinity, because you're looking at it's, it's an asymptotic, the power law. So you're always going to get this kind of mess here. Um, general directed model didn't work at all. Um, and the model is, uh, got, is, is of restricted uh, predictive in it, it's restricted in its ability to predict power laws because um, it only predicts um, mm, it only predicts as, as the ratio of preferential attachment to total edges has got to be at most one, even if you add everything preferentially, you know most of the time focusing on ed sticking edges between old vertices, one plus one over eta can't be um, can't be less than one. it's always at least two. So it doesn't predict power laws in, uh, between the interval open interval one, two. OK, um, and that's the end of the talk. Um, questions? Questions? Uh, did I go to your right that uh, there is no model currently known uh, that violates the uh, heuristic? No, I, I, didn't, I didn't say that, but um, 
I couldn't think of one. Of, I mean. So you know, uh, you do not know any model that violates it currently. I can't think of one at the moment. I mean, well, obviously, if you're doing completely uniformly at random, it won't have a power law. But I mean, among among sort of things which are preferential. I mean, that that triangle closing yes. example is. Um, I, actually, I, let, let me explain how I noticed this, because um, I have a friend who, inv who, who simulated the triangle closing model, and he said, well, the power law appears to 10 to 5. And we sat down and we tried to analyse it, but we couldn't analyse it. But I noti we noticed that um, you know, one in four of the endpoints was added preferentially. So basically, one plus one, uh, so, that, so the parameter was a quarter, so one plus um, It's one in four edges, so that uh, basically that so that's equal to five when eta is a quarter. So at that point, we realise that there might be something interesting going on, um, quite general here, because we never we never actually managed to make a proper formal analysis of this model. But um, so it's it seems um, it seems a reasonable question uh, under under what sort of more general circumstances does it hold, and where you know where you could draw a line which divides it. Um, I don't know about the case where you add an increasing number of edges or something. I was thinking more about as a heuristic for um, it's, it's for finite graphs, but it's, it's proved useful as a sort of heuristic on various occasions, um, you know, followed by subsequent analysis. But it's yeah, I don't know is the answer. But it seems it seems a reasonable question. Where is it? When is it true? And when is it not true? And why is it true in this more general way? It's some sort of you know some sort of large numbers limit or something, which is. Because if you remember that simulation, it had four times 10 to the 8 vertices for that triangle closing, and it still wasn't properly converged at that point. So it's, it's, um, it's only you know, in, the, in the real limit that it's maybe it holds. But it seems, it seems a reasonable heuristic, anyway, as a, first, um, as a first rule of thumb for working out a power law for a network. Um, Thank you. Yeah. And the second question, and the last from me, <laughs> hopefully. Um, can you please explain uh, something about uh, what you didn't mention there? Uh, the model when um, you add more and more vertices of each step. Yeah. Uh, in the more and more edges. In the directive case. In the direct. Ah. Um, Is there a difference between uh, in edges and out edges? Uh, I'd have to look at the paper. I can't remember actually. The directive process was slightly different actually. I think we. I, um, I'd have to look at the paper. I, I, I actually can't, haven't got it at the top of my head. Um, okay, is there any, was there any intuition uh, when you divided uh, into uh, outgoing ed edges and ingoing edges? For example, when a new uh, vertices uh, appear in graph, yeah. uh, it has limited power, limited time to, uh, to point to, to different uh, existing vertices, mm. uh, but uh, as the internet grows, the, all the other vertices, they have more power to Ah, uh, wait a minute, so, hang on a minute, which, which question, uh, perhaps I've misunderstood your question, I'm sorry. So are you talking about the, the model where the, the growth for diverges as a function of the step number, or are you talking about uh, just the, the yeah. general, you're talking about that model? Um, I think I think the directed case we analysed was was somewhat restrictive actually in its generative model. Um, it wasn't as I don't think it was as general as the hub authority model. Um, yeah. I, I, so and your question is basically that um, maybe you. Uh, well, the internet probably grows. A lot of it's to do with densification among existing vertices, but we didn't feed any densification, and this was just a growth model. Um, okay. So I, I don't know is the answer. Okay, Sorry. Thank you. More questions, comments? Uh, what do you think? Is, uh, is it still possible or reasonable to try to get some close form of uh, degree distribution in the case, in the general case? Or it's absolutely impossible? No, I don't know. I mean, I'd bet you. I think not by the technique which um, which was described there. I'm mm -hmm. sure there are probably some other technique, or maybe it can be done, you know, using some more um, some more sophisticated mathematical result because that 
basically those results were um, were derived by just a careful examination of um, the process over t uh, over steps. So um, and then taking the asym you know taking the asymptotics appropriately. Um, so maybe it can be done. Yeah, it, maybe it can be done um, in some other way, but not. Or maybe it can even be done in that way, and we just didn't. I just didn't know how to add it up. But um, it seems rather. It seems difficult if you. If I've got an existing vertex, okay, and at the moment it's got in degree zero, and um, then its its in degree can increase either by. Um, um, an initial sort of unit, maybe some sort of um, <coughs> um, some uni perhaps some uniform choice by an exist an, a new vertex, or I mean, if you if you allow its in degree to um, increase not only as a function of um, how many edges are already pointing to it, how much of authority it is, but how much of a hub it is, then its its in degree could in could increase either by choices made from that. Or by choices made, um, you know, inserting edges by new vertices or inserting edges between existing vertices um, in various ways. And um, okay, the proof the proof works because everything simplifies when you um, when you look at it carefully. And if you do that, it doesn't simplify. Um, when we tried to analyze the recurrences for the expected, you know. In and out degree in the in the hub authority model, we couldn't analyze. Okay, so it goes like this: the recurrences for expected degree in the undirected model can analyze. Okay, uh, the recurrences for the expected in and out degree in the hub authority model couldn't analyze directly, but could get an expression via degree distribution. Um, so it seems it seems sort of intuitive that. Uh, as you go to the harder model, you're not you're going to have a job to get the degree distribution, um, and you need some other sort of insight, which I, I probably exists, but I don't know what it. There's no reason why it shouldn't exist, but I don't know what it is. Um, I haven't, you know. Okay, thank you very much. No more questions or comments. If no more questions, comments. Let's thank the speaker once again. <laughs>